Are you wondering what the difference between a HubSpot workflow and a sequence is? Or maybe you're new to the platform and you wanna know, when do I use each of those in sales and marketing? In this video, I'm gonna break it down for you. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot is a powerful automation tool and depending on what feature set you have inside of the sales, marketing, or service modules, you have access to what's called workflows and sequences. Now, those both automate actions inside the sales and marketing um, activity in your company, but they're not the same thing. So let's break down what each one is and when you might use each inside of your organization. So for starters, I've got sequences pulled up. Now sequences are the opportunity for you to automate one-to-one -one communication in that prospecting or that sales outreach mentality. Now, the difference between sequences and workflows are that workflows are going to be used mostly by the marketing team. And in workflows, you have a trigger event. Sequences are a better fit when you have a one-to-one -one relationship established between a prospect and a sales rep. So again, let's, let's assume that we have a list of people that we've been prospecting and, or we've got a list of people from a trade show that visited our booth, or we've got um, a list of individuals that we have, you know, uh, cold together using a, uh, a lead gen tool or something like, um, you know, Zoom, Zoom info, and we, we are wanting to do one-to-one -one outreach. Um, the content of that communication needs to be highly targeted. So just because it's automated doesn't mean we're sending the same message to everybody. When we set up a sequence, um, we've got a whole different video. If you're if you're in and you want to send a sequence, we've got a couple of videos that we'll tag in the uh, description below about how to actually get started with sequences. But that communication needs to be very targeted. So if I'm a target uh, on your sales outreach and you send me an email that doesn't have the name of my company, doesn't have any information about our, our conversations that we've had in the past, uh, it's going to definitely look more like a marketing uh, blast and I'm probably not going to respond to that. Now, a sequence is also a better fit when a reply to an email is the next step um, or after or when we talk about what the next step is. So maybe it's booking a meeting. Um, usually inside of sequences, they have to take an action like that, like replying or clicking on a booking link, and then when they do that, they get unenrolled. So workflows are going to be a better fit and typically used by the marketing department. Now workflows are going to be um, both internal and external processes, but in this case, I'll run through these and then talk a little bit about more about that internal and external. So workflows are better fit if you are sending, again, like really stylized, when we think quote unquote marketing emails, we tend to think of you know the really nicely designed um, emails that might come in our inbox, looking like a newsletter or a promotion, those would be only able to be automated inside of marketing workflows. Um, inside of workflows, the action here is also triggered automatically, which is different than sequences, because in sequences, and I'll show you here in a second, sequences you have to individually enroll each contact, or you can mass enroll, but you're, in, you're enrolling contacts with a click of a button versus doing something automatically and then someone that gets that email. Um, workflows are better if an instant follow-up is required. So again, if someone uh, enrolls in a webinar or they happen to get an ebook, um, you want that workflow to deliver the confirmation email to them, any additional follow-up they might need, that's all gonna live over in workflows. And then workflows are a better fit if you have a large number of contacts being sent through the workflow. So this is where we're gonna get into that internal and external processes. So an internal processes, uh, or a couple of internal processes that you may consider when you're looking at workflows, for example, this would be the way to say, if you're using, let's say deals, and you want to alert other team members when a particular deal has reached a certain stage, you know, you can get an email to your whole team. We can all get text messages when things uh, move inside of your CRM. That's what our workflow from an internal process would look like. We also use workflows here at our company when someone hits a certain page on our website, if they are a registered contact and they've been cookied inside of the HubSpot platform, uh, it says, you know, Joe Smith has hit the pricing page. You may want to consider following up with him. So again, that would be a way to use a workflow to alert your internal team. Now, external workflows are going to be the processes that are a little bit more like email marketing and lead nurturing. So external workflows, again, would be someone visits your landing page to get your ebook. They then um, you know, request that ebook. It gets automatically emailed to them, and then they enter a nurturing sequence where they have additional emails that are dripped out to them. And again, if they take action, then perhaps you have another workflow that says, hey, so-and-so actually viewed three of those articles that you sent out, and then you pass that on to the sales team. And then at that point, if the sales team has a workflow to create an automatic task, 
for them to call that person and they don't respond, they may consider then moving them over to what we would call again a sequence to do a one-to-one -one outreach to connect on a sales front. So within each of these, um, I'm gonna show you real quick the difference between enrolling or getting them started inside each one. So sequences, you're gonna have to set up a sequence first. And again, a, a sequence is a series of activities and we'll do this real quick here in this video, not to a full extent. Again, we have another video about that that will show you this, but let's just consider this uh, product or demo request. So this might be if someone had visited your website, submitted a demo request, they may have been entered into a workflow to say so-and-so um, actually requested a demo and then you used a workflow to pass this lead on to um, a sales rep and then the sales rep comes in and says, I'm gonna go ahead and start a sequence out to that prospect. So in this case, I've got a product or demo request. You see these templates here. These are things you have to go in and fill out. Um, and then we've got different uh, days you know, set. This is day one, day two, whatever that happens to be. So if I create this sequence, um, I'm not gonna create this now. I'm, again, we have a different video on how to do that. But if I selected this sequence, let's just say this one here, I actually have to go in and enroll individual contacts into our sequence here. And so that's how that happens. Again, it is a one to one or one to many, but you have to actually push that button to enroll the contacts um, inside of, of sequences. The other thing with sequences is again, since it is a sales driven activity and a one-to-one, -one, I can actually do that here in my inbox. If I have the Gmail or the Chrome extension uh, enabled here, we have a different video on how to do this, how to set up the Chrome extension inside of both Gmail and, Hub or in, uh, Outlook. So if you need that, check out that video in the description below. Um, but here, I, if I have a contact loaded, I can go ahead and enroll them in a sequence right here inside of Gmail. And again, it's a one-to-one. -one. And the automation that happens here is the automation that's individualized to that contact. And if they reply, then they get removed from that sequence and no other automation happens. Now, again, inside of sequences, we don't have other things happening. Like if they do this, then that happens. And if they do this, then that happens. That is what workflows are for. So I'm gonna exit out of this and walk over to workflows here. So for workflows, since you don't have that, I have to push the button and actually get the person inside of that uh, automation activity here. Workflows are triggered by activities or changes in fields um, and it's, it's, it's happening automatically. So if I go to create a workflow, it's going to ask me, the very first thing it's gonna ask me is, what do you want to trigger this workflow to start? So you can actually have um, this triggered by work, other workflows completed. You can have this triggered by um, you know, someone taking action on the site, a property changing inside of a contact record, a property changing inside of a deal record. You can actually choose then to, um, if I start from scratch, I can say, I want my enrollment trigger to be and it's gonna give me all sorts of options when I click on here. So again, lots and lots and lots of options to choose for your workflow triggers. It's not gonna say ex internal or external like I just talked about it, but that's how I want you to think about it when you think about uh, workflow triggers. And again, if someone takes this action, then it's an if, if they did this, then go here. If they didn't do this, go here. Those are called if then branches. We've got a whole other video where you can learn how to set up your first workflow. So again, check that out uh, in the description below if you're interested in that. So that is the difference between workflows and sequences. Again, workflows, a lot more marketing focused, internal, external processes. Sequences are going to be one-to-one -one sales and they're automating a lot of that activity, trying to get to that person for a sales conversation. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any ideas for topics for future videos, drop it in the comments below and we'll see you next week.